What's going on, YouTube? You're back with Shades, and we're going to continue our Let's Play of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Lastly, we left off. We decided to talk to Grossberg to find more information on um, uh, Edgeworth's past, and now he is he's telling us that the DL6 incident, uh, the victim in that incident, was Edgeworth's father, Gregory Edgeworth. So let's continue, shall we? What? His father? If you want to know more, you should ask him yourself. Show him this. I'm sure he'll talk with you. Wait, this is a photograph of my mother. Misty Faye's photo added to the court record. Well, it looks like we're talking to Edgeworth. There's nowhere else we can go. December 25th, Detention Center. Visitor's room. What's this? I was hoping you'd gotten my message the first time. Edgeworth, what about your defense? It's no concern of yours. Guess he hasn't found anyone yet. Present the photo of Misty Faye. Edgeworth, it's only been a matter of hours since you last visited, yet you've made incredible progress in your investigation. I'll admit it, I'm impressed, right? You were always single-minded in your work, though. Once you start on something, you always see it through, don't you? About the DL6 incident. Right, DL6. I didn't want you to find out about it. This is why I refused your offer to defend me. I'm sorry if it sounded like I thought you weren't up to the job. I just wanted to keep you away from DL6. So, do you still think it would have been better for me to stay away? Why, like, is there a way for me to, like, increase the frame rate speed? I mean, the... I don't think there is. I don't know, but... I see no point in hiding anything from you now. Very well. Ask whatever you'd like, and I will act to the best of my abilities. The DL6 incident, when my father died. Right before my eyes, he was shot and killed, and I saw it all. My memories from that time are foggy. I suppose it's a self-defense mechanism. In any case, a suspect was arrested. A man. It's pretty clear he was the only one who could have killed my father. The spirit medium they used to kill, take my, talk to my late father said the same thing. It was an attorney by the name of Robert Hammond that cleared the suspect's name. And Hammond is the victim in the Gord Lake murder. Oh, and Hammond is the victim in the Gord Lake murder? Correct. Um, that spirit medium. That was my mom. What? You mean you It's strange. I thought that terrible incident was about to end. And now, this. About to end? A DL6 incident happened 15 years ago. 15 years ago on December 28th. December 28th? The statue of limitations on the case runs out in three days. What? Um, Nick, what does that mean? When a case's statue of limitations runs out, legally the case never happened. Three days from now, DL6 will be closed. Forever. What happened to the suspect? The one who got off innocent? I don't know. He disappeared from public view. Nobody knows where to. If he's still alive, he'd be about 50 years old now. I guess I can understand why he'd go into hiding. It'd be hard to live a normal life after being a murder suspect in such a big case. Um, so was your father a lawyer? He was. Gregory Edgeworth. He was quite famous at the time, apparently. So, you were sort of trying to follow in his footsteps. I'd rather not talk about it. Hmm. Who would have thought there'd be a photo? Edgeworth, did you shoot him? What do you think, Wright? I don't think you're the kind to point a gun at anyone, no. So you didn't shoot him? No, I didn't. It wasn't me. Right. It pays me to ask you this now. I know, you want us to defend you. Yes, will you? 
Of course we won't! Just, just, just hit the no button right there. It's gonna bring me back to this, but yeah, of course we will. Uh, who could have guessed that this day would come? Not me. This is my chance to finally pay you back. Pay him back? Pay me back? For what? I don't remember ever doing anything for you. Never mind, I guess you don't really need to know. Huh. My letter of request. Please give it to Detective Gumption. Yay, got the request letter! Well, I guess we should. What's that? Earthquake? Nick! It's a big one! Wah! It's calming down. Phew. That was scary. Huh? Where's Edgeworth? There. He's on the floor in, the, a, in a ball, shivering. I guess he doesn't do that so well with earthquakes. I've heard of running, but curling up in a ball? Well, I guess we're done. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't seem like he's going to stand up anytime soon. Let's go, Nick. Uh, right. We have to give Edgeworth a letter of request to Detective Gumshoe. December 25th, Police Department. Criminal Affairs. It makes me really mad that I wasn't- I couldn't have this out in time for actual Christmas. That would've been hilarious. What's going on here? Yeet! What's wrong, Detective? This wild lady comes up in here just a while ago, says she came to talk to y'all after hearing what Mr. Wright had to say. What's this about, pal? Lot of heart. What are you going around finding more witnesses? You wanna give Miss Edge with a death sentence, pal? No, not at all. Just... I mean, she did see something. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't go around covering up evidence. Uh, you trying to say something about the way I do my job? No, sir. Look what I got. Hey, you did it, pal. Glad I waited to the last minute to file those papers. I'll rip them up and start new ones for you. Thanks, detective. We'll see you in court tomorrow, then. Good luck, pal. Hey, you guys feel that earthquake a little while back? I was worried. Worried? We're fine. I've lived out here my whole life. I'm pretty much used to them by now. Oh, I wasn't worried about you, though. I was worried about Mr. Edgeworth. Alright. He did seem to go overreact a little, now that you mention it. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. It was a pretty big quake. I'm not gonna- I'm gonna go check on him. You two go eat and get your rest for tomorrow's trial. Later. I wonder what it is with Mr. Edgeworth and earthquakes. I wonder. He was never that scared of them when out when he was in school. So we're going to day two. Then again, I was only in the same class as him for fourth grade. He transferred to another school after that. I wonder what happened to Edgeworth. To be continued. It's a shame we're only eight minutes in, and that would have been a perfect place to end the part. Yep, safe. Hold on. Uh, what? Enter. Okay, so I thought like I could press enter to like change settings, but uh, can't apparently. Oh well, whatever. December 26th, 9.44 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Karma? That's right, Manfred von Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. He's a god of prosecution, right? A god! Not a single case! To do anything to get the guilty verdict. Anything. Hmm, sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. Huh. You don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. That's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of ten. Ugh. So, he was your teacher, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. And now he's trying to get you found guilty. What a creep. Oh, wait. Maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 years! He's as ruthless as me at times 20. 
that's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia, um, uh, Maya, uh huh. You could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh, I can't. Sorry, I tried. I really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. My powers are weak again. Oh man, what bad timing. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. I hope so. What are you whispering about? Oh, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. She was gonna transform in the court with giant gazumgas. <laughs> December 26, 10 a.m. District Courtroom Number Three. And here we are. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. And Mr. Von Karma, is the prosecution ready? Fool. Is there any things that I would stand to where I'm not completely prepared? All right, my apologies. He's even got the judge scared. Very well, your opponent, opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive... A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? <laughs> I tend to give him a Transylvanian accent because it's like the Vaughn thing. Vlad Von Tepish. Oh, wait, wait, I didn't read that. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I call... I call the detective in charge of this case. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. Describe the incident. Now. Yes, sir. Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late Christmas Eve around midnight. There was one boat in the very middle of the lake. There were two men on the boat. Now, there happened to be a woman camping near on the edge of the lake. At 12.10 a.m. she had two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. It went toward the boat rental shop. Hmm. Overhead map added to court record. Testify to the court about your arrest. Now. Wait, Mr. Von Kamer. Yes. Actually, I'm the one that's supposed to be handling the proceedings. Why does everyone do the finger wag? Wrong. There's only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. Uh, yes, of course. You're quite right. No, he's not! A man called, the sta a man called to the station 30 minutes after midnight. Oops, wait, no. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. But, the next morning, a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm, I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now! This is weird. You received a call from a man? Uh, yep. But you said there was a woman camping there. She was the one who heard the two gunshots, right? That woman and the man who called in the report are two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. Ugh. I heard his voice, I'm gonna change it, because the it's hard for me to stick to an accent. The testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I've summoned the woman who was camping. The woman who was camping brought a heart. What happened next, Detective? How long was it between receiving the report and your arrival at the lake? Yeah, well, I'd say it was about three minutes. That's pretty fast. A model for the month is get there quick. Detective, you are refrained from casually revealing department secrets. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Do that and you'll be able to look forward to your next salary review. So much look forward to these days. This is no time for daydreaming. Continue. Yes, sir. 
That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. What was Mr. Edgeworth like when you saw him then? Well, from what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not like a murderer at all, really. Detective, the court requires the facts, not your opinion. How many years have you been on the force? Facts only, detective. Hard, cold, objective facts. Yes, sir. Man, he's not gonna get me. He's got a share of objections. Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep, trusting relationship with the prosecutors. Detective! The court is interested in your musings. Deep, trusting poppycock. I've never heard so many flippant comments from an ace active detective on the force. Ugh. Mm. Detective Gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue, now! But the next morning, the body was found in the lake. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. He was shot through the heart, fatally. Judge, here's the bullet. It didn't strike bone, so its shape is well-preserved. Very well, the court accepts this bullet into evidence. Pistol bullet! The magic bullet. Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. The murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe? That is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right. Sorry, Your Honor. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. What about the pistol made in decisive, made in decisive evidence? Ah, he has the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. There were fingerprints on the pistol found in the boat. They were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. What? Order! Order! So Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found in the murder weapon. Yes, you are. Judge, this is the weapon in question. Accepted into evidence. Pistol added to court record. Members of the court, we now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. Detective? Yes, sir? Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Yes. The ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. Hey, Nick. What does he mean, ballistic markings? Shocking! To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Nick, he's glaring at me. Very well, I'll explain. Actually, Judge, you do it. Eh, me. Eh, ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. Oops. The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet and it fires. You can examine the bu these ballistic fingerprints to which gun it fired the shot. It's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was without a doubt fired from this pistol. The pistol which, as you may recall, was covered with defendant's own fingerprints. My voice is starting to go. I may stop, I may drop the voices at some point. Order, order. This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. Well, judge, I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this point. However, you wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, and so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess, which will last ten minutes. Judge? Yes? What are you doing? A ten minute recess. Now! But wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and with it, man. Yes. Ahem. This court will take a ten minute recess. Who's running this court anyway? December 26, 11.09 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon? Uh, hmm. But that foggy photo makes one thing clear. The only one who could have shot that man was the person in the photo. True. Was that you in the boat? Yes, it was me. What? But you must believe me. I didn't shoot him. But who did? I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Then the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but I thought at the time that he had shot himself. You mean it was a suicide? 
That's the only explanation I could come up with. Huh, I don't think I'd convince anyone of that. Say Maya. Huh? What? Any progress with Mia? Oh, sorry, it's no good. Ugh. I know. I'm no good for anything, am I, Nick? If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? No, I need you here. No, of course not, I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. Even if you don't actually help, it's the thought that counts, right? It's okay, Nick. You don't have to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or defense. What's more, I'm a spirit meeting we can't even contact spirits. Oh, everyone has their off days. I mean, I've just been getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck's gonna run out. Really? Whoa, right! Don't jinx this case any worse than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Uh, oh! Sorry. Whoops. Back in the room! We're back in session, bitches! Court is back in session. Mr. Von Karma, call your witness. Yes. Will Mr. Lotta Hart- Will Miss Lotta Hart take the stand? Lotta Hart, you are a research student at a university. That I am! Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And don't add anything trivial or subjective. Understand? Y'all need to learn some manners! Understand? Yeah, I understand. I understand. Uh, very well, your testimony, please. It's hard for me to hold a Western accent. It's very hard. It was Christmas Eve, just after, the after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. I heard this bag call from the lake. When I looked out the window, I saw two jets in a boat. There was another bang. There wasn't an area thing on the lake, but uh, that boat... Enough. Huh? Judge, you happen to take a photo of the incident. This is the photo. Accept it as evidence. Well, this is a surprise. This looks like the very moment of the murder. Order! I will remove you from the court if I didn't have order immediately. As the witness testified, <clears throat> she looked at the lake when she heard the shot. There was no other boats in the lake. So the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes, who was defended. Miles Edgeworth. Order! Order! I will have order. Well, Judge. The evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well, this court finds the defendant. Wait, Your Honor. I haven't cross-examined the witness yet. A cross-examination? We have the photographic proof. What question that can there possibly be? This photo is worth a thousand words, and they all read guilty. You lose. Or do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Very well. If you have to, have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You'll only flounder in asking meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then I'll have your held contempt of court. Ah, uh, Nick? Contempt? Contempt of court, you know. I guess I understand. Well, what are you going to do? Do you really think there's a contradiction with the facts in the testimony? Uh... Uh... I think there was. I... I think I noticed one little thing. Wow, well, I'm impressed, Nick. I didn't notice anything. Right? Let's take him on. Yeah. I got a bad feeling about this. I understand. I will cross-examine the witness. Very well. I pray for your sake this isn't a waste of time. It was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. Just after midnight, you say. In other words, it was no longer Christmas Eve, but Christmas Day. Huh? Uh, yeah, well, yes. Objection! I know you want to find contradictions, but really... Huh. I hope your next contradiction is a little more rele relevant to the trial. Witness continues to testimony. I was in the car. <laughs> in the car. Why were you camping there anyway? I'm a research student at my university. I was taking pictures to use in my research. What research? This is all sounding suspicious. Just press further. Miss Hart, could you be more specific about your research? Stop interrupting! What does the witness's motive in camping by the lake have to do with the case? The answer is nothing. I object to this line of questioning. Objection sustained. 
Wait, 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 I'm the one who says that. Well, then say it already. Objection sustained. Thanks for nothing, Your Honor. Oh dear, I'm running, I'm, I'm, I'm actually out of time. Let's go for a little longer. I don't have to worry about the 30 minute timeline anymore. I heard this bang came from the lake. So you weren't looking at the lake at the time? Nope. I looked after I heard the noise. She said that already. I asked you to find contradictions, not leisurely chat with the witness. Uh. Could you clearly see the two men? Just look at the picture. Clear enough for you? Uh oh. Uh. Well, let's keep pressing further. Wait a second. I wasn't asking about the photo. I was asking if you saw the two men. Uh, yeah, well, of course. The witness has testified that she saw them. There's also a photo. You must look also for your precious contradictions. He jumped in quick. He's hiding something. Were you watching the very moment the shot rang out? Well, yeah, sure. You're asking meaningless questions. Meaningless. Contradictions, Mr. Wright. Not meaningless babble. Von Karma, I think I hate you. <laughs> He's trying to keep me from talking to the witness. To what end? Are you sure about that? Yeah, as sure as a country gal can be. That sounds pretty sure. Press further anyway, let's do it. I'm gonna keep doing it. How come you're so sure? Well, heck, I scanned the whole lake. Scanned the whole lake? It almost sounds like she was more interested in the lake than the boat. Miss Hart, you. Stop objection! Mr. Wright, the witness has answered the question in full. Heh. <laughs> No need for further questions. Objection sustained. Uh, that's what I'm... Sustained! Yes, of course. Oh, great. Enough. I think we've heard all we need to hear, Mr. Wright. It seems you are unable to find a contradiction in the testimony worth noting. But, Your Honor! You keep your promise. Mr. Wright, I'm afraid that I will have to penalize any further outbursts. I'm holding you in contempt of court. And if that happens, you'll have to leave the courtroom immediately. Understood? Uh, uh-huh. Nick, Wallace testimony is fishy, Nick. Real fishy. I know what you mean, but if I can't say anything, what can I do? I believe we've covered the evidence sufficiently to make a decision. Then pass your judgment. Very well. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the stand. Who was that? It was me. Maya! Something wrong? Do you need to use the facilities? No, I do not. A lot of heart. Your testimony stinks. It's unclear whether you were actually looking at the lake. It's highly doubtful that you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Tell us the truth. This is a matter of life or death. Lada! Did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night? Did you see him fire that pistol? You will stand down. The court does not acknowledge the defense's outburst. Answer me, Lada. What's the big idea? Treat me like some kind of criminal. I saw him. I swear it. I saw Edgeworth. Enough. Judge, declare the defense in contempt of court. Yes. Yes, of course. I'm sorry, but you were warned. God escort Mr. Wright out of the courtroom. He's in contempt of court and must leave. No. No. Wait. I was the one who made the outburst, Your Honor. Nick is innocent. Ha! Huh. What's the difference? All that remains is for the guilty verdict to be declared. Isn't that right, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Wrong! Wrong. What? Did you hear what Miss Hart just said? She said she clearly saw Mr. Edgeworth. That was not in the testimony. That changes her testimony and I have the right to cross-examine her again. Order! 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 You're in contempt of court. It's too late for a while, claims. Judge, sustain my objection. I'm sorry, Mr. Von Karma, but I cannot. What? Miss Lotta Hart has made a new testimony. The defense does have a right to cross-examine her again. But he's in contempt of court. No, I am. 
If you're going to arrest someone, arrest me. Hmm. Very well. My affair. You will leave the courtroom immediately. Nick. I did what I could. I could. You have to do the rest. Good luck. Maya. Poor little bird. Poor little baby girl. Oh shit, I just realized I should have ended the part already. Fuck. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna end the part here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna continue pick it up right in the next part. I'm sorry I have to wait a week for it. I am this outro's gonna end up uh, be a little little short because I just gotta do it. I got caught up in the game. Sorry. Uh, thank you guys for so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.